Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. There are tons of great players who absolutely ball out on their birthday. In 1985, Dan Marino celebrated his 24th birthday by throwing for 329 yards and two touchdowns in a 30-13 victory over the Indianapolis Colts. In 1999, Brett Favre celebrated his 30th birthday by throwing for 390 yards and two touchdowns in a 26-23 victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And in 1998, Steve Young celebrated his 37th birthday by throwing for 309 yards and three touchdowns in a 31-0 shutout win against the New Orleans Saints. You get the idea. There have been tons of great performances on a player's birthday where they have a birthday that they'll never forget. But there was one birthday performance that stands out for just how bad it was. Imagine playing on your birthday, losing badly on national television, throwing a career high in interceptions, getting benched, and having what might just be the worst game of your entire career. Well, as awful as that sounds, that's exactly what happened to Washington quarterback Joe Theismann. In a 1985 game against the Dallas Cowboys, Theismann celebrated his 36th birthday in just about the worst way possible. And this is the story behind that. Before I talk about the actual game, we need some context leading up to the game, because it will help us to understand why this performance was so shockingly bad. The main character in our story is none other than Joe Theismann. If you asked people back in the first half of the 1980s who the best quarterback in the game was, odds are, Theismann would be on a ton of people's lists. At one point in time, Theismann had a legitimate claim to being the best quarterback in all of football. He was that good. He took over as Washington's starting quarterback in 1978, and after a few solid but unspectacular seasons, everything changed in 1982. During the nine-game strike short in season, he went 8-1, finishing with the third highest passer rating in football, winning the Burt Bell Award for Player of the Year and the Man of the Year Award and being named to the first Pro Bowl of his career. Most importantly, he led Washington to their first Super Bowl win in franchise history, where they defeated the Miami Dolphins at Super Bowl 17. I made a video about that game and arguably the best play of Theismann's career, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Even though Theismann had a great 1982 season, his 1983 season was on another level. Not only did he make the Pro Bowl and guide Washington to a 14-2 record, but he was named the first Team All-Pro for the first time in his career. He set a career high in passing yards with over 3,700, and set a career high in passing touchdowns with 29. Theismann finished inside the top five in practically every major category, and was named the MVP of the league, becoming the third player in franchise history, and the first quarterback in team history to receive this award by the Associated Press. After another Super Bowl appearance, he followed it up with another strong 1984 season, where he led Washington to another division title while throwing 24 touchdowns and close to 3,400 yards. So entering the 1985 season, Joe Theismann was showing absolutely no signs of slowing down, as he was expected to once again be one of the top quarterbacks in all of pro football. But as we found out during the first game of that 1985 campaign, he was about to experience one of the worst days ever. The schedule makers decided to give NFL fans a treat when they made the opening Monday Night Football game a battle between Washington and Dallas. By this point, it was maybe the most intense rivalry in all of football. In fact, it was so intense that the last time these teams met, which was during week 15 of the 1984 season, the game ended in a brawl so bad and so intense that the referee called the game off with 20 seconds left and sent both teams to the locker room. For some perspective, when Bottlegate happened, Commissioner Paul Tagliabue made the teams finish the game, even though all the Jaguars had to do was take some knees. The league and Commissioner Pete Rozelle didn't even make Dallas and Washington finish this one. It was that bad. Aside from the obvious rivalry aspect, this Monday night opener also happened to be on Joe Theismann's birthday. On September 9, 1985, Theismann would be celebrating his 36th birthday. It wasn't the first time that Theismann would be playing a game on his birthday, as he played back in 1979 against the Detroit Lions. And that game against Detroit turned out to be the best game of his career at the time. In a 27-24 victory, he had a passer rating of 119.6, which was the highest passer rating of his career in a start. He also threw for two touchdowns and no interceptions while completing over 68% of his passes. That birthday was very kind to him. And another thing that was very kind to him was playing the Dallas Cowboys. During the 1984 season, Washington swept Dallas, and over those two games, Theismann threw four touchdowns and no interceptions. But that was 1984. This was 1985, and it was not off to a good start. On the first drive of the game, Washington is able to get into Dallas territory. Facing a third down situation, Theismann drops back to pass and he gets sacked by Randy White. The usually formidable Hogs offensive line could not hold their blocks long enough on that one. Not a good start to the game for Theismann, and it's made even worse by the fact that Dallas is able to drive down the field on their first drive and get on the scoreboard following a 53-yard field goal by Raphael Septien. 
When Theismann gets the ball back for the second drive, looking down the field, he throws an interception to Michael Downs. I should know that before the game, Downs had some things to say about Theismann, calling him cocky, and saying that it was going to be easy to get up and play this game. He definitely wasn't kidding with that pick right there. The good news for Washington was that Dallas couldn't do anything on that drive as they were forced to punt. The bad news for Washington was that on their next drive, they got nothing after Theismann missed a wide-open Art Monk. Could have been a touchdown with a better thrown ball. Instead, it results in nothing. It was a bad first quarter for Theismann and company. And it was about to get a heck of a lot worse. After the team's trade touchdowns to open up the second quarter, with Dallas is coming off of a one-yard run by Timmy Newsom and Washington's coming off of a one-yard run by who other than John Riggins, Washington gets the ball for their fourth drive of the game. Theismann is incredibly lucky that this one did not get picked off, as if Dexter Klingscale catches this ball, that's probably going for six the other way. By the end of the first half, Washington trails at 17-7. It's a bad first half for Theismann for sure, but it's not a spectacularly bad half. Having 102 passing yards and a pick isn't good, but it's nowhere close to the worst birthday ever. Unfortunately for Theismann, we still have a whole second half to play. First drive of the second half, and Theismann gets picked off by Everson Walls, who jumps the route perfectly. That's two interceptions for Theismann. And after Dallas scores on their next two drives, courtesy of two field goals by Raphael Septien from 39 and 43 yards out, the Cowboys now lead it 23-7. Washington is now down by three possessions, since the two-point conversion didn't exist back then. Theismann is going to have to put in some work to get back into this game. That doesn't happen, because on the first play of the ensuing drive, Theismann throws his third interception of the game. This time, it's Ron Fellows who picks this one off with ease. Three picks for Theismann. But wait, there's more. Because after Tony Dorsett scores a touchdown to make it 30-7 and put the game almost out of reach, Theismann drops back to pass and is extremely lucky that this one was not going for six the other way. That's the second time today that a Cowboy defender dropped a pick six. The drive ends with a punt. On Washington's next drive, however, Theismann would not be so lucky, as Bill Bates comes up with the interception. Four picks for Theismann, an absolute disaster of a birthday. Want to see it become a bigger disaster? Of course you do, that's why you clicked on the video. Because the start of the fourth quarter, Theismann throws a terrible pick six to Victor Scott. It's a 26-yard touchdown for the Cowboys, who now lead it 37-7. If Don Meredith was in the booth, you know exactly what he'd say by now. It got so bad that Theismann got benched later in the quarter, finishing the game 15-35 for with five interceptions and a passer rating of 32.3 which is worse than if you did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. And when you break down the numbers and the game some more, you truly understand why this was the worst birthday ever. Let's start with the five interceptions. That was a career high for him. For some perspective, the most picks he ever threw in a road game prior to this one was three, and he threw five at Texas Stadium on his 36th birthday. The passer rating was also historically bad by his standards. Again, he finished this game with a 32.3 passer rating. It was the first time since 1981 that he had a game with a passer rating that bad, and he only completed 42% of his passes, with that number being inflated at the end due to garbage time. It was the worst completion percentage he had in a game since 1981. When you're putting up career worst numbers in practically every major statistical category, that's absolutely terrible. And sure enough, the Cowboys let him know about it. Michael Downs, who had one of the five interceptions on Theismann, said after the game, we meant to wish him a happy birthday, but we didn't get a chance to. It got to a point where the fans started singing happy birthday to Theismann in an obvious sarcastic manner, and even the stadium organist got in on the action, playing happy birthday over the PA system. And if for some reason you don't believe me or the newspaper accounts from the game, hear it from Joe Theismann himself. First game of the regular season, we play the Cowboys at Texas Stadium. I throw five interceptions in that football game. It was ugly. It just happens to be September 9th, which is my birthday. I'm sitting on the bench, and all of a sudden, everybody in Texas Stadium starts saying, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. And I'm sitting there going, That would be the last time that Theismann ever played on his birthday again, as he never played again after the 1985 season due to a gruesome injury suffered in another Monday Night Football game against the New York Giants. But of all the ways to spend your birthday, this one might just be the worst. To recap, he threw a career-high five interceptions. His team lost the game on the road to their biggest rival. He got benched, and an entire stadium was singing along and mocking him. For many people, their birthday is a day to celebrate and a day to remember. For Joe Theismann, it was absolutely a day to forget. 
Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, so it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Monday and Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for a chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this, condense down to 60 seconds and follow me on TikTok at JRGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.